Welcome to the Entree Pastors Podcast on YouTube. This is a show that helps pastors think, act, and thrive as prosperous entrepreneurs. Well, hello there, and welcome to the Entree Pastors Podcast on YouTube. I'm John Sanders, one of the co-hosts of the show, and really excited to tell you about this week's episode. You're getting ready to hear a conversation that me and my co-host Les Hughes had with one of our friends by the name of Carrie Olson. Now, Carrie's not a pastor, but she is doing a business that I think would be a great fit for many pastors. She is a voiceover actor. Uh, She has her own voice acting business and has enjoyed tremendous success in that space and has a really awesome story of how she got into it and how she has built her business. And she's here to tell us how you can do something very similar using a thing you use every day in your ministry. That's your voice. And so this is really a fun conversation. I'm thrilled to introduce you to Carrie, and I know you're going to get a ton of value from this episode. So without any further ado, here's our conversation we had with our friend Carrie Olson. Check this out. Well, Carrie, it is my delight to introduce you to our audience here. Welcome to the Entree Pastors podcast, my friend. Thanks for having me, John and Les. It's so good to be here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is exciting, Carrie. You and I met, or I met you in a mastermind that we were both a part of a few years ago. And uh, I've also, I think before I ever met you in there, I had heard our friend Dan Miller mention you several times on his podcast. So when I met you, I felt like I was meeting a celebrity. I was like, oh my goodness, I'm in a in a mastermind with Carrie Olson. So um, <laughs> this is going to be a great conversation because I'm excited to share the work that you do with our audience because I think that um, it might be a good option for some of our listeners, potentially. And so we're going to explore that together. Um, Why don't we start with this, Carrie? Give us just a brief overview of the work that you do, and then we'll we'll start unpacking it from there. Sure. Uh, Well, thanks again for having me, and I'm I'm super excited to be talking to your audience. And John, I feel like I'm talking to a celebrity too. So uh, it's been so much fun um, being in that mastermind together. It was awesome to get to know each other um, through that. So I'm a voice actor and uh, the work that I do, I work from home, from my home studio in Kansas City, and I do mostly commercial and um, radio spots. So if you hear a voice that sounds sort of like mine trying to sell you, I don't know, a cheeseburger or, uh, you know, just whatever the the spot is, uh, I do a lot for, um, you know, you'll hear me on cable television. Pandora, Spotify, YouTube ads. So that's the majority of what I do. And then also spreads over into, I do some corporate narration, e-learning, audiobooks, even voice matching. So there are a lot of different applications for voiceover work. Like I said, the majority of what I do is commercial, but really anywhere that you hear a voice, but don't see a face that that's voiceover work. Wow. Yeah. I really want to get into how you got into that. I want to hear you share the story, but just so we're clear, Carrie, and I think you already know this, but our audience largely is made up of pastors or people kind of with a ministry background. I would say the majority fall into what I'm getting ready to say next. They're they're tired of being broke. They don't necessarily want to be out of pastoral ministry or, you know, not working in that context anymore. But they they're they're done with the financial struggle. They would love to establish a couple other streams of revenue. So is this something you do it full time? But is this something that can be done at kind of a part time level as just adding a little bit of extra money to the family budget? Or would you recommend to do it well that you just go all in and that's all you do? Yeah. So there are lots of different levels of doing this. And if you think about it, it's very similar to acting in that way or to a lot of other freelance jobs where you can kind of dabble or you can go in 100% and try to do it full time. It also depends on what you're trying to do. If you're just trying to earn a little bit of extra income, there are plenty of people who do maybe they narrate for YouTube videos, or they're only focusing on doing some local e-learning things or things for the local companies. And then others that are wanting to earn more, and they're going to go into trying to get an agent and trying to get more, you know, national commercials. And if you're doing that, then it definitely requires more training. It requires more business know-how. So there are different levels you can enter it at. And some people kind of start small and then try to build it up. And other people know they, they want to go for it full time and they just jump in 100%. So there are different levels that you can 
enter the business at. Yeah. Well, take us back. I mean, you're, you kind of described where you are today with your uh, voice acting, but where did it start? Tell us your story kind of from the beginning. How did you get into it? And uh, what was your journey like for you? Sure. So the very beginning was my husband and I, we started podcasting in, I think around 2011 and totally for fun. There were, well, no, his business, he had some, you know, business going on, but he came home one day and I had been watching that show Downton Abbey and Mm -hmm. I was looking for a companion podcast for it. And I couldn't find one that I really liked. So I thought I'm just going to start recording about Downton Abbey. And so my husband came home from work one day and I was just recording a podcast. And so that was the the first kind of voiceover thing I did. And that was around the same time as I was working in HR. And this is when e-learning was fairly, I mean, I won't say new, but not every single company had an e-learning course, but our company wanted to get an e-learning course. And so I narrated it. And so that was my first you know, kind of voiceover job within for a company, but I didn't realize it was voiceover. I didn't know that this was a business I could do in and of itself. And, but I really liked e-learning. And so I sought out another job where I could do more online training. And through that started narrating more of my own courses. And meanwhile, had my first daughter and was working this corporate job and really wanted to be able to spend more time at home with her. And So driving to work one day, I was listening to a podcast and uh, the person being interviewed on this podcast, it was an entrepreneur type podcast. And she was talking about what she did for work and how she's a voiceover artist and how she records from her home every single day. And she's got her two kids. And I thought that sounds incredible. I bet I could, you know, I want to look into that. And so I called her up and started getting training from this voice actor and within a few months started auditioning, started booking a little bit of work and was eventually able to quit my job and start doing voiceover work full time. Wow. That's cool. Hey, can I, can I ask something about that, John, just to take off from something that before Carrie you said, do because, that, I just, yeah. I just want to connect the dots. Did you know that you're talking to the, the host of your Downton Abbey podcast that you followed so closely for years? Like, mm, did you know? I just you know, wanted to connect those dots. You were like, like a super I guess, fan. Uh, I know. That, that'd be a different episode, John, but, but continue um, with your question. I'll, All right, sorry, I'll have to, ahead. I'll have to plead ignorance, no disrespect, <laughs> Carrie, but I, I've never watched. I've never watched. I know this is going to shock you. I've never done that. And, and by the way, I've never recorded a TikTok video. Unlike our co-host who uh, pretty much lives there, Carrie, I know Whoa. that's a shock. Thing, but, I oh, didn't know that. Listen, he's got a black belt. Get back to the interview. And, uh, Let's go. Stay serious. <laughs> okay. And oh, by the way, well, as long as we're talking about this, does does John Sanders not have a beautiful voice, Carrie? Let's just talk about that for a second. Mm, it's lovely. It is. It's like it is. velvet. You know, it's one of those voices you just want to keep listening. He could just talk. It's, yeah, it's Barry White. Is what it is. Let's just go ahead and call <laughs> yeah. it. So Back anyway, the, uh, go ahead, Les. All right. Well, I can. I I think this is going to really pique the interest of of many out there because, like you said, a lot of people are like John was uh, referring to a lot of our tribe in they end up uh, making a living with their voice also with their mind and research and communication skills. It's not just a voice, but that's a big part of it. But for those that are maybe self-conscious about their own voice, or for those who believe that you're either born with a good set of pipes or you're not, I'm curious as to how much of that, you know, you mentioned training, so how much of that is just, would you, would you say that's just God given natural versus the training? What did that look like for the person that this sounds real interesting to, but they're, they hear themselves and they don't hear what they hear on the radio, you know? Yeah, so, so what do you think? That's such a good question. And one of the things that I would point out is if you think about TV and the different voices that you hear, not every voice is the voice of Batman or Superman. Like he's got to have his sidekick too. And you've got to have the villains and the people who aren't the main characters. So if your voice doesn't sound like Morgan Freeman's, that's, you just won't go out for those roles. There's a different character that's, that your voice is suitable for. So that's the first thing I would say, if if you feel like, well, I don't have this perfect radio voice, that's okay. Uh, a, a lot of the trend right now in voiceover work for commercial is conversational. 
So we mm -hmm. want people who sound like us. You hear a lot of things that are people kind of inside their own heads, just your everyday person, the girl next door, that kind of thing. So you don't have to sound super, you don't have to sound like John Sanders uh, necessarily. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then the other thing is there, your voice is only so much of it. Because if you think about Morgan Freeman, for example, amazing voice, but if he was talking monotone, and didn't have good expression, if he wasn't a good storyteller, you would not want to listen to his voice. So mm. there's only so much that's natural, your, your God-given voice. And a lot of people think that because they have this great voice and people tell them they have a great voice, that they will be a shoe in for voiceover. And that's a great start, but there is going to be an aspect of training and honing your skills, because if you can't connect with the audience, well, no one wants to listen to someone talk about anything in a monotone voice that doesn't feel relatable. And so I think that's one, another place where pastors might have uh, an upper hand because there's kind of empathy built into that and people, they care naturally. And so much of voiceover work is about connecting with your audience. So if you come at it from that perspective, then um, th that can, uh, you know, if you don't have the greatest voice, but you do have this ability to connect that can trump the, you know, not having the, the smoothest voice ever. I appreciate you saying that because that's something we deal with a lot with our community as pastors, you know, who start thinking about going out in the marketplace and establishing another stream of income. A lot of times there's a, there's an immediate thought of, man, all I know how to do is be a pastor. That's what I went to school for. It's what I've been doing for the last few decades. What in the world would I do? So we're constantly encouraging our audience. Like you do have skills that can be used in the marketplace. We just have to, you know, use them a little differently. So I love that you're tapping into that. And I think what I want to do, Carrie, is stay right here and I'll divide it up like this and you tell me what I'm missing. For someone who's just thinking about maybe getting started in this, there's certainly the talent side of it where we have to, you know, hone that skill and, and so we could have more of a conversation around that. Then there's like the technical side of it. You know, what is your setup? What what equipment do I have to have to get into this? And then there's kind of the business side of it of how, how do I start getting people to pay me to sit down and, and talk into a microphone? So let's stay where we are right now and just continue to to talk a little bit more about, okay, so I'm I'm a communicator and I'm maybe above average and I use my voice on a weekly basis, but what what more do I need to do to be an effective voiceover actor, like what's the path that you would encourage me to take uh, if I wanted to make money down that road? Yeah, so one of the things I talk about is that you can have the greatest voice in the world and have the greatest skill set and ability, but if no one knows who you are and knows that you're there, then you'll never make a dime at voiceover work. And then conversely, if you are the best business person in the world and you're a great marketer, but you don't have the skills to to deliver, then again, you're not going to make much money. So it, it's definitely a two-sided thing where you have to have the ability and at least have the training and know how to do what you're trying to do. Now, if you wanted to niche down, you don't, you don't have to be an expert at everything. If you're, if you think maybe I just want to do podcast intros for churches, you know, that's a niche you could do, and you wouldn't have to become an expert in character and animation, you know, that kind of thing. You could really focus in on, on what it is you want to do, but you would have to know the skills necessary for that particular niche. Um, and then of course the tech piece is universal. Uh, almost everything now is recorded from home. If you are a pastor, you might have access to, uh, you know, depending on what your facilities are at church, you might have a studio or some things that, that are available to you. But most of the time you're going to be recording from home. So you'll need a good recording setup, a nice quiet space, a good microphone. The good thing about that is it's a lot less expensive now to get good quality equipment than it used to be. And it's actually pretty easy to have a space that sounds like it's studio ready. Uh, you know, there are plenty of people. And actually when I first started, I was in a closet and my soundproofing was the clothes that were in there. And I recorded mm. national commercials from there. So, uh, you know, you can, as long as you just have to sound good, it doesn't have to look good. So as long as you can kind of, uh, it passes as professional grade, then that's what counts. What's your setup at home? Like now, I mean, you've been doing this for a while. So do you have a really cool setup that's better it's, than it's, sitting in a closet? Yeah, it's pretty nice. What I say about the setup is you, you're basically purchasing convenience. So the more that you invest in your studio, uh, because before, before I had a really nice setup, if there was a dog barking outside, I had to stop recording. If my kids are a little bit loud, I have to stop recording. If there's a leaf blower going on, I have to stop recording, kind of wait. And 
that's fine. I, I, it was a job that I loved and I was doing it from home. And so no complaints. I'm, I'm willing to wait a little bit. I didn't invest anything into this quote unquote home studio. Um, but as I started getting, you know, just progressing in my career, I started investing more in my space so that now I don't have to stop for as many things. So I have a, see, my booth is a vocalbooth.com booth. And I have uh, my Neumann U87 microphone. I have an Audient ID22 interface. And the way that I have it set up is I have a, a really quiet monitor that's in my booth. And then it's connected outside to my laptop, which is outside the booth because you don't want something in there that can have a fan on that's going to cause more noise. And, and then I have my wireless um, mouse and keyboard inside the booth. So uh, oh, everything's... Cool. Everything's right there. Yeah. Very cool. And by the way, we should just add this for our YouTube audience. If you're watching the video portion of this and you're looking at Carrie's setup going, she doesn't look like she's in a booth. You're on the road right now, technically, correct? You're yes. not at home. So yes, I am. Yes, yeah. I'm at my in-laws and, and using a, my not using my good microphone. So if the sound doesn't sound amazing, I apologize for that. Oh, that's fair enough. I just figured we'd let people know because they might be going, I'm confused. It doesn't look like she's in a soundproof booth at all. It's kind of funny though, Carrie, when I recorded years ago, the audio version of my book for the audio book that I wrote, um, I, my setup literally was two of our church's foam back chairs that I kind of laid sideways on my desk to create that little sound proof for that, you know, that foam padding around me. And then I mm -hmm. bought a twin egg crate, you know, mattress cover thing at Walmart. And I covered that and made a little roof over it. And I literally just climbed under there and, you know, read from my so it was very uh, low tech for sure, but it, it did a perfect. good job. So yeah, yeah can, we can start with uh, start with next to nothing in some of this and, and upgrade as we go. As sounds like what you did as far as the technology side is concerned. Sure. And even if I'm traveling, if I have to record from a hotel room or something, I'll construct something similar to what you just talked about. I we'll use hmm. an ironing board and pillows. You just get really creative. Interesting. So let's talk about the business side of it as well. Like when you got started, how in the world did you find that first client or the first few clients that were actually willing to pay you to say, yeah, we need you to record something for us and here's money to do it. Right. So the way that I first started was there's, there are online marketplaces and you can join these online subscription sites where companies will post jobs and then you can audition for them. And that was how I booked my very first few jobs. Interesting. So, I mean, it was just that easy. Like, well, I'm, I, it's not just that easy. I know there's a lot of work into it, but you are auditioning then for companies that are raising their hand saying we are looking for somebody. And now you just have to go earn that work basically by doing a good job on the audition. Right. And, and you're right. It's not easy. And especially with, it can be, um, there can be a lot of competition in those because some of those sites, now there are some that want you to submit an audition or a, a demo before they let you on, but there are others that just say anyone with the money to join the site can join. And because of that, you'll have people who think, oh, uh, I think, I think I'm going to be a voice actor today. And they go and join a site and then they record an audition off of their cell phone and it's not good quality, but there's just, it's very, uh, you know, inundated. And so yeah. there's, there's a lot of competition and not all of it's good, but, but that's there. So I definitely recommend for those things to get training. And, and for those of you who your listeners who might be thinking, and I've had people say this to me, why would I need to get training to learn how to talk? I've been talking since, you know, literally since I was a baby, I know how to talk. It's, it's fine. I don't need training for it. I just would encourage you to, you know, just try one lesson, you know, with a coach or join a group or something just to kind of see what's there because it is a different thing. Um, and especially, you know, some people have radio background and they think, well, that's, that's an advantage. And it is as far as using your voice and maybe even have an equipment and endurance with your voice, that kind of thing. But there is a, if you think of the way that DJs talk, it's not very natural, you know, so some yeah. of that has to be unlearned. Um, so, so I would encourage some training if you are planning on going to, to a, a marketplace to audition. Well, you know, that's interesting because they call it voiceover acting or voice acting. So, I mean, it's like, if, if you think about regular acting, you can't just waltz into a theater and do a great job. Like it takes years to hone that skill. And there's a lot of things actors do to improve that and so it sounds like it's similar in the voiceover world as well like there's a lot of nuance to it that separates the pros from someone that's just getting started 
I would say so. And again, it does depend on what you want to get into. There are some people, they're only, you know, just to give another example of an application of voiceover work, some people, their primary thing is doing phone systems. So there were most of what they do is thanks for calling GoDaddy, push one to talk to customer service. And so that requires less acting training than someone who's going to be doing, you know, narrating fiction audiobooks or who's doing commercials. So it, it's different depending on the genre you want to get into, but it is, it's a great outlet for, I, I would say for anyone who, who wants, you know, just some, some time to play because acting classes, it allows you to get outside of your, uh, you know, your professional box and, uh, and have fun. And so if that's something that appeals to you, then uh, it is great in that it's similar to acting, but you don't have to wear any makeup and you don't have to leave the house. So you get to kind of have this acting fun from home and be silly. My husband, he jokes sometimes because sometimes he'll hear me like screaming uh, from my booth because, you know, maybe I'm doing an audition for a video game where <laughs> people are, you know, I'm getting killed in various different ways or something. Uh, so um, you know, you do get to kind of get outside of your box a little bit, but then there's also corporate narration. So there are a lot of different genres and depending on what appeals to you and kind of what your skills are, what you, um, what your bent is, there's, there's something out there probably that, that could appeal to you. And, yeah. uh, no matter what it is, you're going to want to get some training in that thing. I was going to ask you, you mentioned characters earlier, like, do you have kind of a repertoire of characters or what's your favorite niche to work in or do you enjoy just the variety of doing a lot of different things what does that look like over your years of doing this yeah so i will say that i i'm typically a very quiet person and i'm introverted and voiceover has given me a place to just to just be silly and so what i i really like doing uh, i like doing commercials and specifically kind of charactery commercials. I've done some voice matching and those are a lot of fun um, to get to do character work and different accents and things like that. And really some of my e-learning work has been, you know, cause there are different scenarios uh, within some e-learning things. So you might think, well, a banking e-learning course is going to be pretty straightforward, but uh, with scenarios, you might have an angry customer and mm. I, they need someone to play that angry customer who's really mad because the, you know, the, she didn't get her deposit slip back the way she liked it or something like that. And the, the, the person at the bank has to decide how best to handle this difficult customer. And so I've, I've gotten to do some really angry screaming, um, you know, to customer service reps also. It's interesting. Yeah, Carrie, I know that, um, that act, some actors will have agents, you know, mm -hmm. to help them get the word out and get in front of people, do voice actor, or I guess some of them could, but are you represented by someone like that? Or are you just out there getting referrals from other people that you've worked for and, and hustling for it? Yeah, that's a really good question. Cause that's, that's another thing that uh, can kind of divide the, the voiceover world a little bit. Some people who do things all on their own and then others have agents. I do have an agent who helps me to get work and, and the majority of the, you know, higher profile work that I get comes from my agent, my manager. Very I'm sure this on camera acting. I'm sure this is uh, one of those answers that you know you get into it what you put out of it or you get out of it what you put into it is how I meant to say that. But what could someone realistically expect to earn financially as a successful voiceover actor that's maybe been doing it for a little bit or you know, maybe just getting started? Maybe take us there. I mean, what's what's a realistic uh, idea and what what amount of work does someone need to put in to get to that point? Yeah, so there's a rate guide that you can look at. Uh, the one there are actually quite a few of them, but the one that I usually refer people to, it's a Global Voice Academy rate guide, and you can look and see what a commercial, like a local commercial that runs for you know six weeks, what that would earn uh, versus a national commercial. So what's so funny about voiceover work too is that you know you could do a commercial for your uh, that's local and it's the same amount of work and do you know, a different commercial that's national or international and make way more money you know, on, the, on the larger scale thing. So it, it really depends. Uh, for e-learning, a lot of times uh, you, are you gonna price that out per word? Although there are different ways that you, can, that you can price it out. So it depends on the genre. You know, if you're doing um, animation versus commercial versus uh, you know, co corporate narration or something like that. 
Um, and then, yeah, like you said, how much you put into it. I know some people who with no knowledge of the voiceover industry just bootstrapped it. They just started telling people what they were doing and they got into different uh, social media groups and started talking about what they do and started booking work. And then by the time they talked to me, they're like, oh, I'm making a few thousand a month. I'm like, well, you didn't, you didn't do any of the normal things. You know, you didn't go through these channels that I would have recommended. They're just kind of bootstrapping it on their own. So um, yeah, it really is really broad. And, you know, I would say to get to where you're doing the, the big national commercials, that, that usually for most people takes a few years. It takes uh, some training with different people. It takes investment because you're going to want to have a really good demo so that you can get a good agent like Les was talking about. So it's, it's so interesting how some people, you know, like you could do audiobooks on ACX and not invest a dime. If you have, if you have, you know, uh, equipment that works, you've got a good closet that's soundproof. Um, you don't have to pay anything to audition on ACX and you're doing audiobooks. Now with audiobooks, you have to be careful because you can do either royalty share or per finished hour. And if you do a royalty share for an audiobook and it doesn't sell anything, then mm. you've just narrated this huge book and edited it, which takes hours and hours and hours and you didn't earn anything. So you have to be careful with making sure it's a book that's going to sell copies or make sure that you're doing it per finished hour. So yeah. that's a long and convoluted answer to that question, but it really is a very broad yeah. spectrum. Well, that's good. And you, correct me if I'm wrong, but you had a coach early on. You hired a coach to help walk you through some of those uh, early days, correct? Right. Yeah. And do you offer coaching to people in your world? I know you have a course and, and stuff, which we'll talk about, but do you do coaching with people that are getting started in this? I do right now. And, and over the years, I've had periods where I stopped um, just because I, you know, my main thing is doing voiceover work. So sometimes I just, I put the brakes on coaching and just focus on my, on my work right now. I do have some openings for coaching. Um, again, I don't know exactly when this airs or when whoever's, you know, your listeners, listeners will be listening to it, but they can always check in and see. Yeah. Cool. Cool. You know, I, a question I was going to ask you, I think when you and I were in uh, our mastermind together, something you were doing that I found intriguing, uh, you were taking an impromptu class, uh, impromptu acting. Is that, was that just for a season? Are you still doing that? And what was it about that, that, uh, you know, that is, that, was that connected to your voiceover work? Or was that just a for fun uh, type of a project? Oh, both. Improv has been huge for, for me. And I recommend improv classes to everybody, literally. If you've never done an improv class, I think that it's really helpful to help you to think quick. You know, um, one of the things about improv is that there are no wrong answers. So you, you literally are supposed to say the first thing that comes to your mind and it helps you to, to get quicker in that way. And then you, you may have heard uh, yes. And so it, uh, mm -hmm. when your partner says something, you agree with it. You're not uh, you know, sometimes we try to close things down or, you know, no, or we get really close with improv. It's always yes. And then you build on it. So I think it's really helpful for life in general, but it, I started doing improv to help with my voiceover work because when I'm auditioning, I don't have a coach there with me. So you have to become not just a good, someone who can perform well when they're being coached, but someone who can self-direct and improv helps you to to get into characters and to be creative and to come up with a new perspective. If there are a hundred auditions that are being done for a commercial, 90 of them might come in similar where people are kind of doing the thing that they feel like they've heard on TV before or the way they think it should sound. But when you can bring your own unique perspective to it, then uh, that's when it gets a second listen. And when the people who are doing the hiring go, oh, that was a little different. And so mm -hmm. improv is really helpful for that. But again, I recommend it, whether you're going to do voiceover or not, I think improv is awesome. Yeah, I think I said the wrong word. I said impromptu, I think, but I meant- I knew what you were getting at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 there was a book titled uh, by that, uh, Yes And, I think it was the name of the book written by a comedian. And he talked about that principle and how it applies to life, you know, rather than having an initial response or a posture of no, but- you know, yes, and is a much more healthy approach. And as someone who studies comedy, like I think comedians are some of the most artistic communicators and skilled communicators out there. And so I've, I've studied them and learned from them. And I'm just, I'm impressed by the ones that do the improv stuff, you know, and have owned that skill. Um, so that's cool. I'm so is, are you still in those classes? Or was that just for a season that you did that? I still I'm not taking them regularly, but I do take one off classes still. Okay, cool. 
Cool, cool. So here's a, this is a really random question, but just something that popped into my head as we've been talking here. What uh, has the, has all of this generation of uh, artificial intelligence, is that having an impact or is there any concern about how that may impact or is there, is there a way to leverage that inside of the voiceover world? What, what's your take on that as this is all starting to become more mainstream? Yeah. So that, that's the big question that all the voice actors are asking right now. And anytime you get voice actors together, it, it bubbles up. And, you know, I think the, the big answer is no one really knows right now. I mean, it is having an impact. I have lost a job to AI before. Wow. And, um, you know, because the, the advantage obviously is uh, time. Uh, this was an ongoing client that I had and they needed something super quick and I couldn't get it back to them in that time. So it takes no time at all to feed a script into an AI and have them just generate it for you. Um, but I still do work for that client. So they, they recognize the quality is not there. They just were in a spot where they had to have it really fast. And so there, I think there are certain, certain genres that are more at risk for being replaced by AI, but then also there are certain people or, or types of applications, I would say, where maybe they couldn't afford, these companies couldn't afford a voice actor. And so they just didn't have narration and, but they can afford an AI voice to read it. Uh, so, so I think we'll see a lot of that where people who before couldn't afford it are using it. Um, but people, you know, companies that have a high standard for uh, learner retention and for storytelling and, you know, some of these commercials that are really emotional, AI mm -hmm. can't do those things at least yet. Uh, yeah. as well as a human can, as well as a well-trained human can. That's another reason why I think training is really important. You don't want to be, you don't want your skills to be poor enough that in, you're competitive with an AI. Um, yeah. I hope that my, um, you know, ability to emote, you know, at least at this point uh, is better <laughs> than, than what an AI would do with a similar yeah. script. So yeah. it's there. And um, I'm actually going to be on a panel at a voiceover conference next month uh, where we're talking all about AI. Interesting. You know, a few months ago, I listened to a podcast from Seth Godin. I'm not a regular listener to his show, but someone had recommended something. So I was kind of down that rabbit hole. And and you get he was talking about uh, AI. We get to the entire end of the episode and he and it, he says in his voice, by the way, this entire episode was done in AI. And I was kind of toward the end going, this is this sounds boring. Uh, like something sounded a little off, but I it totally sneaked it past me. You know, but again, I'm not a regular listener of his show, but um, Anyway, yeah, I, I, toward the end, I could tell like this audio, just something's not quite there, but interesting world in which we're living. So right. as far as all that is concerned. Hey, Carrie, what's it, what's been one of your most uh, exciting projects or something that you thought was one of the coolest things you, you got to do in your voiceover work? Let's see. I think, well, some of the most exciting things are the things that are recognizable to other people. So a few years ago, I was, uh, there was a Grammarly commercial that just got played over and over and over and over again and on YouTube. And uh, so I don't know how many tens of millions of views that that particular commercial has, but uh, then it took off as a TikTok challenge. So people on TikTok started using my voiceover and uh, like mouthing it. And so it kind of took off a life on its own. Oh, and cool. so that was a lot of fun. And it, it made me more recognizable to like my little, my niece, thought it was the coolest thing ever. And she would have me do the voiceover for her friends. Um, and so that was fun. Um, but I, you know, I don't know, character and animation stuff. I get to do uh, voice matching for, for different movies and uh, movie trailers and things like that. So it's fun to get into character. I voice matched for Margot Robbie and Aquafina um, and just some other uh, voices that are, that are recognizable. So those were a lot of fun. That's You've cool. mentioned that a couple of times for what is voice matching? So it's trying to sound, usually it's a, it's a celebrity voice and it might be for a film or a trailer, a movie trailer. And maybe they don't want, maybe they don't know exactly what the line is going to be, or maybe it was windy that day, or maybe they just don't want to bring in the, the, you know, this talent that's going to be way more expensive to have them in a session. And so they get a voice actor who can match their voice and tonality. And uh, I'll just read that? a few lines and mm -hmm. it gets plugged in. And so you think you're listening to this person, but it's actually me. 
Wow, that's awesome. I've wondered about that before. So, for example, if there was some, it's not not this way so much anymore, but used to when there would be a, a line of profanity, and it was mm -hmm. ne network television, especially like a movie, they would dub that's it. That's scary. And it, there you go. That's that's you, right? Yes, very, yeah, very similar concept. That? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Hey, when uh, when you and I were in our group together, am I remembering right? Didn't you get to do like the MTV awards or something like the live event where you were kind of doing the the narration or the, you weren't the MC, but you were like the voice, like tell that story real quick. Yeah, I forgot about that, John. Yes. So I got to go to LA and do the live announcing for the MTV movie and TV awards. So, um, you know, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Leslie Jones. So she oh. was the host and I was back in this little booth with headphones on listening to the, um, the producer saying, you know, right, voiceover go. And then I would, you know, had this binder in front of me with the whole script of the show. And it was really neat because it's really fast paced. It's live and there, you know, the scripts might get changed out uh, you know, from moment to moment. So there's someone running into the new script and just have to look at it. And uh, I was really proud that I didn't fumble once. So nice. got through the whole thing, saying people's names and announcing everybody and uh, didn't make any mistakes. So good job. Nice. Very Thank cool. you. Very cool. Well, let me start uh, approaching the runway here. Let's land this airplane. If I want you to speak to that person in our audience, Carrie, that's hearing this going, you know, I've, I've looked into voiceover stuff. I've heard about it. Um, Honestly, after hearing this, I'm more energized than ever before to like move in this direction. Where's a good starting spot for that person? What advice would you give to that person that is going, I'm, I'm going to be serious about taking some action and moving forward in this, but what's my next step? What would you say to them? Yeah. Well, first of all, I would say if you've listened to this and you do feel more energized, I've been where you are. So I, I mean, cause it was literally a podcast that, that introduced me to voiceover and after listening to it, you know, I think that when you get introduced to this, like anything, you're either going to feel more like, yes, this is what I, this is where I want to go. I feel like I at least want to look into this more or the more you learn, you go, well, that isn't quite what I thought. And that's okay. Because you're, you know, you're going to move to something else. So if, if you do feel that, then I would encourage you to, to pursue it, you know, and, and learn more. I have a lot of free resources on my site. I don't know if you want me to mention the, yeah, um, please do. The ebook. Um, so if you go to Carrie Olson, vo.com slash entree pastors, is it pastors or pastor pastors, plural entree pastors. And I'll spell out my name. Cause there, I think there are something like 36 different ways to spell Carrie and two different ways to spell Olson, but, um, it's C A R R I E O L S E N V O as in voiceover dot com and then entree pastors. Uh, I have a free ebook that's about uh, getting started in voiceover. And so it's a really, I think, um, well uh, structured and realistic guide to getting started. It's not get rich quick. Uh, yeah. This is going to be quick and easy, but it's also not, hey, this is impossible. It's like, if you yeah. want to work at this, here's what you need to do. And so it, it lays that out uh, realistically. And then I have a group also uh, called the voiceover success intensive. And what I love about that group is it has people who are brand new to voiceover people who literally, you know, some of them have been thinking about it for years. It's, it's funny how many people come in and say, this is something I've always wanted to do. Um, and I'm just now feeling, you know, strong enough to, to, to dig in and others who say, I had no idea what this was, but I, you know, I read your ebook and I thought, cool, let me try it out. So there are people who are beginners and then there are full-time voice actors who just get benefit from the group and they keep coming back year after year. And so that has online modules that you can go through that will teach you everything, you know, as far as the foundation of voiceover. And then it also has live touch points every month too. So I have an office hours call where you get face-to-face -face time with me and I'll answer any question you have. And uh, we have a mentor in the group that can help you with tech setup. So it's a really nice kind cool. of full fleshed um, membership. It doesn't have one-on-one -on -one coaching. So that would be something that you would want to pursue, but I can, you know, help, help you navigate that. But yeah. as far as learning about the industry itself and having a sense of community, because it's an isolating job, uh, you know, it's done in a booth. Um, so this gives you a sense of community as well. I love that. What's the link or the URL if someone wanted to connect there, Carrie? So that's carrieolsonvo.com slash voiceover dash success dash intensive. 
and it, there should be a link to that in the ebook as well. So if you, if you download the ebook, it should direct you to that. Cool. Well, Carrie, this has been awesome. I'm so grateful for your uh, time that you've given to our audience and something else too less. And I'll talk more about this when we wrap up the show today, but um you know, we're going to, we're going to highlight your course inside of our pastor's business Alliance and encourage people if they want to connect with your course and getting started and all this, like that's another place that they can go and, and, uh, you know, learn from you and how to get into this and stuff. It's been really cool to see your journey as I've kind of followed you, like I said, at the beginning from Dan Miller in the early days to, you know, getting to spend some time with you in a group and just see the success that you've had. And, uh, have you ever been like, have you ever been out to eat with your family and and then someone overhears you and says, I recognize your voice. Like, have you ever been voice recognized in public like a celebrity? <laughs> hmm. Other than your niece's friends? I don't think so. Well, it'll happen. I don't think so. Keep doing what you're that. doing and it'll happen. <laughs> well, that that is though, I will say that's one of the things that I that I appreciate about voiceover work is that again, I don't have to put on makeup. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a very, it's, it's great for having kids. It's great for wanting to kind of mm. maintain your anonymity. So, um, I've done some so, on-camera things and so, you know, who knows maybe someday, but, um, what, what'll happen is somebody will say, has anybody ever told you, you sound just like Margot Robbie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You sound like that lady on TikTok. That's awesome. Right. <laughs> That's right. Good stuff. Well, Carrie, thank you so much. I'm grateful for your time and we wish you all the best as you continue to serve people in the way that you're doing it. Thank you, John and Les, and same to you. Sure. I love thanks, the Carrie. work that you all are doing. Yeah. Thank you. Well, hey, thanks for watching this episode of the Entree Pastors podcast. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can be notified every time we release a new episode. If you'd like to get connected to other pastors who are learning to think, act, and thrive as prosperous entrepreneurs, then we invite you to check us out on Facebook. Just search for the Entree Pastors Connect group, answer a few of our simple questions there, and we'd love to include you in the conversations. And if you're really ready to go to the next level, then we invite you to join our Entree Pastors membership community. When you become a monthly subscriber, you will receive access to courses, exclusive community, and coaching that will help you along in your own Entree Pastors journey. If there's anything else we can do to serve you, please visit us at EntrePastors.com and we will do our best to serve you there. God bless everybody. See you soon. Mm -hmm.